Мене звати Юлія, я методистка Green Country у Харкові. Сьогодні ми з вами проаналізуємо пробне ЗНО з англійської мови у 2021 році. І також мова вебінару буде англійська, тому я думаю, не буде проблем з розумінням. Окей, okay, I guess we can start. And uh, um, also along the, this webinar, we will discuss some tricks and tips for each, types of the task, uh, each type of the tasks. Uh, if you have some questions, you can also um, write them down uh, in the chat. Uh, I will be answering them probably in the end of the training session of our webinar. Uh, and um, now we will start with uh, listening. So you can also improve your listening skills along the way, uh, listening to me. So um, basically this year, uh, I can say that Zeno was quite uh, difficult because of uh, some confusing answers and questions in listening part, but we will discuss them and we will also listen to the audio of uh, trials and all, and we will discuss why uh, it should, uh, why it can be wrong or right. Uh, one more uh, request from me, uh, please, uh, I would like to make this webinar as interactive as possible. So I will be also asking you maybe to answer some questions or to give your ideas on the correct answers of the, um, of the task. So we will start with questions uh, uh, for listening. It will be four parts. We'll start with the first part, questions one uh, from one to three. Um, as you remember, in the first part uh, of the uh, listening test, we, al uh, we always have uh, the pictures with different options. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, how can you make your um, task easier? First of all, uh, you might just uh, note down the names of the pictures. For example, we have some bird, we have uh, a fish and uh, some lizard, I suppose. So, uh, and when you have everything um, written down in your answer sheet, uh, in your test, it's much easier to listen and to be focused on uh, the question. So, as always, we will have uh, all the um, items here mentioned in the audio because uh, they will never make this task um, easy. Uh, so, I suggest you listen into the first question and think uh, what can be the answer. But first, let's have a look at the task. What is the question? Uh, we should underline the keywords uh, of the question. Right here, I can see only two. Discovery Center, this exact place, and uh, which of them seen. So, which animal can be seen there? Uh, pay attention that uh, Discovery Center is probably maybe some place or maybe department of the zoo or maybe the zoo and so on. So we need to listen to the word Discovery Center and one of these options. Uh, for now, I will test the audio. If it works, please let me know in the chat. Just I want to make sure that everything is fine with the sound. in a fight to save endangered species. Can you hear? Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Okay, so let's listen to the first question and we'll uh, answer. The zoo's breeding success story is the Komodo dragon of Indonesia, the world's largest lizard. The zoo has about 50 of these primitive looking creatures, most of which have been born here. The Komodo dragons can be seen at the Discovery Center. A special pride of the zoo is Amazonia a recreation of the world's largest rainforest. The huge glass structure contains representatives of rare animals, various fish and colorful birds from the Amazon region. Amazonia and the Discovery Center are open daily from 10 a.m. until closing. Okay, so uh, what is your idea? What can be the correct answer? Please note down in the chat box. Mm -hmm. See, okay, so let's have a look. Uh, first of all, uh, all animals were mentioned in the audio, so we could hear all of them. We uh, heard the birds, the fish and the lizard. And uh, also we had the phrase, Komodo dragons can be seen at the Discovery Center. 
Dragon is kind of a like synonym of the word lizard. So you could also think that it's the correct option. So you were right. Exactly. Uh, you also need to hear the word discovery center because they also mentioned uh, the zoo. Okay, and um, in the end, we also heard about birds and fish and so on, but we actually didn't need it because it uh, could be seen only in uh, Amazonia. Okay, so the correct option is C, you're right. Uh, always look for the synonyms, uh, try to come up with some synonyms for um, these words. For instance, uh, dragon, they took as lizard. Okay, let's have a look at the second question here. So we also have different options, uh, the pictures. Um, as well, uh, you need to remember to note down the names of the pictures. So we have muffins here, some apple pie and carrot cake. Uh, carrot cake. Uh, probably they will also mention the synonyms of these uh, food items, but I think it will be only like that. And the task, what is the girl allowed to try? We would, try, uh, we would underline only the girl, uh, only the word girl and allowed try. So what she can try. Let's listen to the audio and uh, give the answer. Um, how was school? How did you do on the test? School was okay, and I did great on the test. Um, I was so worried about that test, but now I feel great. I'm glad to hear that. You've been studying so hard for the past few weeks. Now you can relax and enjoy life. Are you cooking? It smells delicious. I'm baking your favorite carrot cake. It looks really yummy. And I can see chocolate muffins and an apple pie over there too. You were busy, weren't you? Yes. Jeff has to take something to his school fair tomorrow, so those muffins are for him. Can I have a piece of carrot cake? I want to enjoy life right now. You don't want to wait until after dinner? It's calling me, and my mouth is watering. No, I don't want to wait. Can I, Mom? Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, um, need to uh, note that all desserts were uh, desserts were mentioned. So we could hear muffins, we could hear apple pie and carrot cake. But the question is, what the girl uh, can try? So uh, there were there was a dialogue. I'm baking a favorite carrot cake. So this is the first food item we heard. Chocolate muffins, we heard apple pie as well. And the other part of the dialogue, can I have a piece of carrot cake? It's her request, it's her question. Okay, go ahead. So she is allowed to try, uh, what is your idea? Let me know in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, carrot cake, because uh, muffins are for brother, you're exactly right. Okay, great job. And question number three, the third part, uh, we have some symptoms here. Uh, this type of question is kind of confusing because sometimes uh, we can use different synonyms of the symptoms. Uh, the first one, it's uh, obviously coughing. The second one, having a temperature. And the third one, having a stomachache. What about the task? Uh, please pay attention that in some kind of the questions, we have the part not. Uh, in this one, we have it as well. What is not among Laura's symptoms means what uh, Laura doesn't feel. Uh, let's listen and uh, find out. Good morning. Good morning. I have an appointment with Dr. Clark at 8.30. What's your name, please? Laura Nicholson. Follow me to room A, please. Here we are. What are your reasons for seeing Dr. Clark today? Well, I've been feeling tired lately and occasionally my stomach hurts. On top of that, I've had this persistent cough for the last two weeks. When did you start having these symptoms? <clears throat> I started feeling tired about two months ago and then a little bit after that, the cough came. I got a stomach ache long before feeling tired. Okay, let me take your vital signs. How am I doing? Everything is good. Normal blood pressure and no high temperature. 
Please wait here for a minute. Dr. Clark will be with you in a moment. So what is your idea? What can be the correct answer right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, you're right. No high temperature. This is the key word I can say in uh, the full audio. Also here, all symptoms were mentioned. Uh, the doctor or administrator, she said, uh, she mentioned everything. Uh, the girl mentioned that she has a stomach ache, that uh, she also is coughing currently, but then uh, the administrator said that she has no uh, high temperature, so it means that Laura doesn't feel this symptom. You're right, it's option B. So uh, to sum up this part of listening test, uh, we can say that um, you shouldn't listen to, you shouldn't be focused on only one word, for instance, cough or only a stomach ache. You will hear all of them at the same time already, but you need to listen to the context. It's very important. And don't forget to underline the key words in the questions, like what not among symptoms. Like you don't need to underline everything, but just focus on the most important ones. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next part. It's question uh, four, five, and question six. Uh, question four, you can see uh, on my screen right here. Uh, before we start listening to the audio, uh, also I suggest you to think about some keywords in this sentence. In your actual Zeno test, you're advised to underline them. It helps you a lot because this type of the question is multiple choice. And usually we will have lots of text there. So you need to be focused only on one uh, piece of information here. So uh, among the keywords, I can say uh, environment agency recommendation. That's enough. And then you can just underline uh, in option A, shop with same bag a lot, for instance, or B, reduce price paper bags, and C, forbid supermarkets sell plastic bags. Uh, here you need to remember about the meaning of the word reduce and forbid, because in the audio they might mention the synonyms as well, they will not say reduce the same word, they probably will say something like make less or uh, try to minimize and so on and so forth. Uh, talking about the word forbid, they might use some kind of um, not to allow, for instance, or not to let, or the word to ban. You might also come up with some, uh, you know, um, probable uh, words that can be used in the audio, so it will be just much easier for you during the listening, uh, listening task. So now let's listen to uh, this part and try to answer the question. Much energy to manufacture a paper bag as a plastic one. The Environment Agency examined a range of bags made from different materials to find out how many times they need to be reused in order to have a lower global warming potential than an ordinary single-use plastic bag. They found out that the key to reducing the negative effect of all carrier bags, no matter what they're made of, is to reuse them as much as possible. It turned out that although cotton bags are the most carbon intensive to manufacture, they are the most durable and will have a much longer life. So if customers replace their shopping bags with cotton ones, it will have a greater environmental effect. Let's have a look. So in the audio, they said that uh, the key to reducing a negative effect is to reuse bags. Uh, talking about the word reuse, uh, it's basically a synonym of the word a lot of times. Uh, and all other um, options, B and C, they were not mentioned. They were mentioned in another context, like uh, in the supermarket, they were talking about just uh, some kind of bag that it can be used different time, uh, in, at the same time and so on. But also there wasn't mentioned anything about the price of these uh, bags. So you need to be very focused on the details because they might mention the word supermarket, but it doesn't mean that it's uh, the correct answer. Uh, what do you think is the correct one here? Mm -hmm. I can see the option C. Mm -hmm. What else? Maybe other uh, ideas, or maybe you remember that from your mock test. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so basically the correct option here is A, to shop, sorry, to shop with the same bag a lot of times. So a lot of times, it's a synonym of the word uh, reuse. So here it's not very obvious, but uh, you just need to think, uh, you know, deeper when uh, we have such a question. This is one of the confusing questions in uh, this listening task. Let's move on to task number five, question five. Sorry. So uh, again, uh, our task here is to underline the key words. What about the question itself? Speaker state wet weather. This is also one of the confusing questions on the no. I think um, like a lot of students had uh, problems here. So uh, wet weather, what is wet weather? It can be, for example, raining or snowing. It also kind of a wet weather. Uh, so we need to uh, we need to hear some synonyms of this word as well. It will not be mentioned the same way. He will not or she will not say the wet weather. Uh, what about at option A? Uh, it gets people to share emotions in social networks. Uh, talking about the keywords, we can underline share emotions, social networks. So uh, and the word eat because um, he or she might say about people who can encourage and so on. Option B, it makes people uh, turn help in hospitals often. Also one of the most um, like important keywords here. And the last option, it encourages to meet with friends indoors. So um, you need to listen carefully because the speaker will mention basically everything here. Let's listen and try to uh, give the correct answer. This group feels angrier and less happy on days with more precipitation. Another study found that rain even increased the number of negative posts published on Facebook. Texia Evans, a clinical psychologist in San Francisco, where it rains 67 days a year on average, says that when it gets dark and dreary out, some people definitely tend to feel lonely and less energetic about everything. It's pretty common to see a change in mood, such as feeling sadness or feeling sleepy when it's rainy outside. To cope with such a condition, she encourages people to do sports, connect with others instead of hiding from the rain alone indoors, and your mood is sure to be sunnier, no matter how dark and gloomy the weather may be. Okay, listen. So what is your option? What can be the correct one in this uh, case? What do you think? A, uh -huh, okay, any other ideas? Uh -huh. A, C, okay. Let's have a look at the phrase that was said in the audio. Um, the first one, rain increased the number of negative posts published on Facebook. Facebook, it's a synonym of the word social network here. It's about option A. Talking about option B, it was not mentioned at all. Like they didn't say anything about hospitals or uh, anything like that. And option C, uh, she encourages people, uh, the girl who lived uh, in the USA, to do sports, connect with others instead of hiding from rain indoors. So we have the word indoors that is the same as in the option C, but the meaning of the phrase and the meaning of the option, they are completely different. So uh, the correct option here is A. Uh, we have social network. Facebook negative posts, it's kind of a sheer emotion, like they post negative um, like pictures or negative thoughts on Facebook, means they share their emotions on social networks. So the correct option is A. Also very difficult and confusing question, I would say. So you need to uh, listen very, very carefully and remember about each and every detail. Also, talking about the last option C, you can see that in the option we have it, it encourages people, but in the audio he says she, the girl encourages people, not rain encourages, but the girl. It also makes a big deal, so be very careful here. Uh, question number six. Let's deal with the keywords first. What did the speaker like about her school? Can we underline just speaker like? her school. Uh, and three options, uh, close your home, uh, second one, no voice, 
and see, studied and lived there. Let's listen and uh, think of the correct uh, option. But anywhere, either England or some other country, will be different due to their own character. I went to an elite girls' school, which was private. This means you pay tuition. I eventually became a weekly boarder, which I loved. It meant I didn't have to travel for hours to and from home on public transport. And I could take advantage of sports facilities after school because I stayed there. I had been attending a primary C school until I was eight, but bless my mom, she decided I would benefit from going to this particular private school, which I did. The teachers were strict but kind, so I had to study hard, but I enjoyed it. Okay. So what is your idea? What can be the correct one here? Mm -hmm. Opinion. Okay, C. Who else? Uh, B, C, okay. C, okay, let's have a look at the audio itself. So talking about the first option, it was close to her home. She didn't mention anything about her home and the distance uh, about the school. What about option B? Very no boys in that. Yes, she really said I went to girls' school. Uh, that means that boys uh, couldn't study there. But she didn't say anything whether she liked that or she didn't like that. So it cannot be the correct answer just because uh, it doesn't correspond to the question uh, in the test. And uh, we have option C. She said, because I stayed there. So she uh, didn't have to uh, spend lots of time commuting, like going uh, from school and to school, home and so on, just because she lived there, she stayed there. Here, uh, the synonym is a stay, the synonym of the word leave. So you can also correspond it like that. Uh, okay, so the correct option is C here. Be very careful when uh, we are talking about the question. So remember, what is your question? Like, it's not just uh, to hear the same word or the same idea. It's also to answer the correct question, the relevant one. OK, and let's move on to the next part of listening uh, test. It's task number two, uh, true or false uh, task. So we will start with the first question. Uh, here it's number seven. And also, we need to underline the keywords uh, in the statement seven. The first ballpoint pen was not a success because of its limited purpose. We need to remember that uh, we also uh, have to underline the keyword limited purpose because we need to look for the synonym in the audio. Uh, ballpoint pen, I think, will not be uh, exchanged with any other word just because it's the name of the uh, device. And the word success, you might also hear another uh, word, like this synonym, not exact one. Uh, and uh, let's start listening. Let's um, analyze what can be uh, right or wrong here. Team of three, start here. Let's start. However, this invention did not spread as it could not be used for writing on paper. In time, the patent was also lost. After that, many tried to improve on the design, but failed as the pen did not deliver the ink evenly. In the early 20th century, Laszlo Biro, a Hungarian newspaper editor, tried to make a pen that would dry quickly and without dirty spots. Mm -hmm. So let's analyze. This invention didn't spread as it couldn't be used for writing on paper. So what about the synonym here? What do you think? Which word is a synonym of the word limited purpose? Please let me know in the chat box. Which word is the synonym of uh, the word limited purpose? In the, yes, exactly, cannot be used on paper. So if the pen cannot be used on paper, so we cannot use it everywhere. So it's limited, you're right. Uh, and this statement is true right here. So um, it, could, it couldn't be used on paper, it was limited. Uh, question eight, uh, newspaper printing gave the idea of the workable ballpoint pen. Uh, let's have a look. Also, what kind of keywords we can underline here? Uh, newspaper printing, give idea, 
workable pen. I think that's enough. Let's listen and check uh, our ideas. He noticed that the ink used in newspaper printing dried quickly to 11. Look at the five. Now you will have 20 seconds to look at the twice. The history of the ballpoint pen began when the leather tanner John J. Loud invented a pen which could write on leather and patented it in America in 1888. However, this invention did not spread as it could not be used for writing on paper. In time, the patent was also lost. After that, many tried to improve on the design but failed as the pen did not deliver the ink evenly. In the early 20th century, Laszlo Biro, a Hungarian newspaper editor, tried to make a pen that would dry quickly and without dirty spots. He noticed that the ink used in newspaper printing dried quickly, so he and his brother, who was a chemist, started experimenting on a workable pen. They Okay, so what is your option? Is it true or false? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's have a look at the um, audio. Uh, he noticed that the ink used in newspaper printing dried quickly, so they started experimenting on a workable pen. You are exactly right, it's correct. So even uh, we have the word newspaper printing, they didn't change anything. Everything is like that within the question. And uh, because of that, they started uh, working on the new type of pen. Okay, great. Question nine, the Biro brothers patented their ballpoint pen in Argentina. Uh, also, kind of a confusing uh, question here because we have the countries that was also mentioned, but um, in this uh, context or in a, and another one. So what would we underline? Uh, brothers, Biro Brothers, patented pen in Argentina. Let's listen and think, is it true or false? the mechanism to make a ballpoint pen that would not allow for ink to dry out in pen, but it would still leave the mark behind when used. The first working ballpoint pen was presented at Budapest International Fair in 1931. They made an official request for patents in France and Britain in 1938 and got positive responses. In 1941, the Biro brothers moved to Argentina and opened their Biro pens of Argentina. The factory made ballpoint pens and sold them in Argentina as Biro Men. This ballpoint pen was licensed and made in Britain as a Biro for the Royal Air Force crews as well. So what is your option? True or false? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Great. Let's read. They made an official request for patent in France and Britain. Uh, let's analyze. So, uh, made an official request for patent. They didn't say they patented because it's also too obvious. So, uh, there were two countries, France and Britain. But what happened to Argentina? They just uh, sold it there. So, in 1941, the Bureau brothers moved to Argentina and started selling their pen there. But they patented it not there. They did it in France uh, and Britain. So, this statement is false. Also, be very careful while listening. Uh, try to be focused on the details, additional information, because it just can change the whole sense uh, of the question. Let's go to the question number 10. The first ballpoint pen didn't need refilling for 15 years. Honestly speaking, while I was listening to this question, I was puzzled at some point of time. But um, just because here we need to also apply our critical thinking. First, let's underline the keywords. Uh, first pen did not need refilling 15 years. Uh, let's listen. After the Second World War, others tried to sell their ballpoint pens, but with limited success. Milton Reynolds saw a ballpoint pen when he was on a business trip to Argentina in 1945, and when he returned to the USA, redesigned it so he could obtain an American patent. 
His ballpoint pen called Reynolds Rocket was the first commercially successful ballpoint pen. It was sold under the ad that said, it won't need refilling for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we heard exactly the phrase did not need or will not re need a refilling for 15 years. But um, what is the option according to you? Is it true or false? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. I can see a great answer. Yeah. Let's uh, have a look at the script. It was sold under the ad that said it won't need refilling for 15 years. Um, you're exactly right. It's just an advertisement. It's not the fact. Uh, probably it didn't need uh, the refilling. Probably it did. We never know. So uh, it was said that it was just an advertisement, but not an actual fact. So it's false. As you can see, it's not really obvious, even though we heard all of the information, like the phrase itself, but it had another meaning. Okay, and uh, the question 11. Ballpoint pants are popular because they are affordable. So the keywords are pants popular because affordable. Let's think about the synonym of the word affordable. It can be cheap, it can be not expensive, probably. Let's listen and uh, um, find out what we will hear there. Gimbal's department store in New York City sold a few thousand ballpoint pens just in one week. Since then, ballpoint pens started to take over the world. Today, due to the availability of mass production, ballpoint pens have become increasingly cheaper and are the most widespread writing instrument. Okay, so your option, your ideas, true or false? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, you're exactly right. Uh, ballpoint pens have become increasingly cheaper. So the word cheaper is a synonym of the word affordable here and are the most widespread writing instrument. And the word widespread is a synonym of the word popular. So uh, you can also remember about this one. Okay, so that's true. So finished with true or false. Now let's move on to the last part of listening task, of listening test, questions 12 to 16. This one is meant to be the most difficult part because we have uh, five multiple choice questions. Each of them uh, are aimed at um, like checking your listening skills very deeply. So uh, first, before we start listening, also let's um, underline the keywords right here. Book how to be lovely contains. Uh, we can just underline how to be lovely contains. Uh, we don't need the word book because uh, that's the book for sure. Uh, option A, recordings Audrey's voice. We can just uh, mention Audrey's voice, recording its voice itself. Uh, if we talk about the phone, uh, B, comments uh, of Audrey's friends. So we can just um, underline comment and uh, friend or Audrey's friend. And C, pictures drawn by Audrey's fans. Pictures by fans, I think that's enough. Let's listen to the audio and check uh, our ideas. Start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Today, our guest in the studio is Melissa Halstern, a King Audrey Hepburn fan and freelance writer living in Chicago, whose book about Audrey Hepburn, How to Be Lovely, will help us to uncover the real Audrey. Hi, Melissa. It's a pleasure to see you here. Hi, David. Thank you for inviting me. It seems to me that your book, How to Be Lovely, has more philosophy than biography. Yes, to some extent. It revisits a lot of interviews Audrey gave over the years, allowing us to hear her opinion directly on universal topics of interest to women all over the world. Careers, love, motherhood, and relationships. It is illustrated by rarely seen photographs behind the scenes stories and insights from friends who knew her well. Audrey Hepburn is one of our most beloved actresses, but not 
Okay. Uh, what is your option? What do you think? A, B, or C? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, let's see. Uh, talking about option A. Uh, they said that it revisits a lot of interviews over, year to, uh, over the years, allowing us to hear your opinion. So, uh, talking about the word hear, uh, in this case, they use it not literally, like not literally hear her voice, right? But just to get to know her opinion, her uh, thoughts on that, and so on. Uh, they didn't mention anything about the recording of the voice, because uh, just the word hear confuse you in this case. Option A cannot be right here. Let's have a look at option B. Insights from friends who knew her well. Insight, uh, it's the uh, synonym of the word comment here, because uh, right here we need to uh, just see not the same word, because it will not mention that for sure, but something that your friends um, told about her, for instance, uh, in the interview and so on. And option C about pictures, uh, they mentioned it is illustrated by rarely seen photographs. Yes, picture is a synonym of the word photograph, but still uh, we didn't have any information about pictures drawn by someone, just the photographs. Uh, the correct option here is B, uh, because uh, they mentioned about the um, like facts from her life given by her friends. Uh, let's move on to the question number, uh, number 13. Where did Audrey acquire her education? Um, have a look at the word acquire. Um, we can just think about the synonym kind of gets her indication or where she studied, for instance, and so on. Um, three countries. Uh, and you know that you will hear all of these countries mentioned. So be very careful. It's one of those questions that require details uh, of the audio in the text. So uh, let's listen and uh, choose. But he knows many facts from her biography. Will you share some of them with us? Oh, certainly, with pleasure. The daughter of a Dutch mother and an English businessman father, Hepburn was born in Brussels, Belgium, and educated mostly in England. During World War II, the young Audrey and her mother were in the Netherlands. At war's end, Hepburn was finally able to return to England, where she modeled and began playing parts and movies as a chorus girl and dancer. While shooting one of those films... Okay, let's go back to our question. Uh, what is your option here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, let's have a look at the script. Uh, for the option uh, A, Belgium cannot be correct because she was born there. They didn't mention that she studied. Uh, B, during uh, World War II, the young Audrey and her mother were in the Netherlands. So also, we didn't know uh, whether she studied there or not. And option C, educated mostly in England. So uh, while you're predicting the correct answer, you can also uh, get help from your prediction. So we predicted the word to get education, to study, and uh, we just forgot about the word educate, actually. Uh, okay, so the correct option here is England, because it's stated very uh, clearly, she educated mostly there. Okay, question 14. Keywords. How Audrey begin career? That's enough. Uh, option A, worked as theater dancer. B, uh, had small roles films. And C, wrote fashion business or wrote about fashion business. Let's uh, listen and uh, answer the question. Monaco, the graceful Hepburn was spotted by the French author Colette, who recommended her for one of the starring roles in the upcoming theatrical adaptation of her novel, Gigi. Was it a great success? Yes, and Hepburn received favorable reviews for her performance. Impressed with her screen test, the director, William Wyler, invited her to his film, Roman Holiday. After the release of Roman Holiday, Hepburn won an Academy Award for Best Actress for her role as a princess. The same year, she won a Tony Award for her starring role in... Okay, go back to the question. Your option. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Scene. Uh, let's check with the script. Option A and uh, B. She began playing parts in movies as a chorus girl and dancer. And C uh, is not mentioned, basically. So the correct answer here is B, because then uh, the speaker elaborated on her uh, getting a role in the movie. So B is correct. But uh, we could hear the word dancer, but she wasn't a dancer. She got a role as a dancer. So she played a dancer in the theater. Okay. And 15. What is true of Audrey Hepburn? So right here, we don't need any uh, special keyword, just what's true about her. Option A, uh, had perfect taste clothes. Maybe she was good at fashion. Uh, B, sang musical My Fair Lady. And C, left cinema for Broadway. I think that's enough. Let's listen. Ways on the age. Slim, elegant, and stylish. Hepburn presented a new ideal of beauty for millions of moviegoers in a lot of films. Actually, she turned the image of the Hollywood actress. From the moment she burst onto the screen, she became the envy of a new generation of women, as her fashion sense was effortless and elegant. And you know that for one of her most... Okay. Let's see. So, uh, talking about option A, they said... Uh, her fashion sense was effortless and elegant. Option B, she was chosen to play Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady, so we mentioned uh, this uh, musical. And C, she won a Tony Award for her starring role in Broadway's Ondine. So, uh, what do you think is the correct answer here? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you're right. She had perfect taste in clothes. Uh, so the synonym here is fashion sense, equal to a uh, kind of a ta taste in clothes. But as you see, all other options were mentioned. I mean, My Fair Lady was mentioned and Broadway was mentioned, by, but in a completely another uh, meaning. So you need to be very careful also uh, when we talk about the meaning of the question. And the last question here is question 16. What did Audrey do during the last years of her life? Uh, we can underline what uh, she do during last years. Uh, last years of life, it's obvious. Option A, was involved uh, in charitable activities, or we can just say in charity. B, traveled around globe pleasure and C participated theatrical performances. Let's listen and get to know. Popular roles in Breakfast at Tiffany's, she earned her fourth Oscar nomination for Best Actress. In 1967, Hepburn got her fifth Academy Award nomination for her performance as a blind woman in Wait Until Dark. Soon after that, she left full-time acting and lived mostly in Switzerland, appearing infrequently in movies that were also praised. I know that she was also chosen to play Eliza Doolittle in the film version of the musical, My Fair Lady. Yes, and Hepburn's acting was perfect, although another actress sang instead of her. Hepburn's most significant work over the last two decades of her life was not captured on film. Not so many people know that Hepburn was named a special ambassador for UNICEF the United Nations Children's Fund. Yes, and she traveled extensively, raising money and awareness for the organization, giving numerous speeches and interviews about UNICEF's work. Hepburn was even awarded a Presidential Medal of Freedom. In her last screen appearance, Steven Spielberg's Always, Hepburn played an angel, and the role served as a reflection of public image during the last years of her life. Well, Melissa, thanks for coming to the... Okay, let's go back to the question and check with audio script. A, uh, option A, she was named a special ambassador for UNICEF Children's Fund. Option B, she traveled raising money and awareness for the organization and third, not mentioned. Talking about option A, what do you think, uh, can it be the correct answer or not? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
So, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, she was involved in UNICEF, so it's obvious that it's charity. So she was involved in charitable activities. It's A. Why B cannot be right? Just because she uh, really traveled around the globe, but she, she didn't travel around the world for pleasure, but for raising money and awareness for the organization, for this uh, UNICEF organization. She participated in theatrical performances. Again, it was said before. Not at the time when she was uh, in her last years of life, but before. Uh, in this question, we need to mention and answer only about last years. Please be very careful and remember about your uh, task, like your question. So the correct option is A right here. Okay, so let's sum up our main um, actions that we need to do in the listening tasks. In each listening type of the task, we might underline the keywords. It will be much easier for us just because we will uh, see uh, the most important details of the question and the options, and we will be focused on them, especially if we have multiple choice, just because you just might, you know, feel lost there because lots of texts and audio, you are limited in time and so on. Even though you can listen twice, still, uh, during the first listening, try to answer the question. Don't think that you will hear it in the second one, in the second listening. But during the second listening, check yourself. Uh, try to uh, check if you really answered the correct, uh, correctly or not, because um, they give you an opportunity to check yourself one more time. Just use this chance. Uh, now let's move on to the next part of the test. It's a reading part. Uh, we will also have some questions from 17 uh, to 38 of different types. Um, let's start with the first part. It's task number four, questions 17 uh, from 17 to uh, 21. Let's have a look at the first one. So we will have a set of pictures, a kind of posters of different um like it can be a movie poster or it can be advertisement poster, uh, maybe just job hunting poster, just the pictures, you will deal with them. Um, you know, from the first uh, glance, you might see that it's quite easy, but uh, again, in the options, they will put some confusing ones, so be careful. Uh, we have the same strategy for completing this type of the task. Remember about the keywords. What about the keywords in the option 17, picture 17? First, let's have a look at the picture. My, it might be some maid, you know, the person who cleans houses. Um, and the, the keywords, uh, it's been a long day. I think we don't need this. It's just some kind of extra introduction. Uh, keywords, house cleaning, uh, kitchen cleaning, floor cleaning, laundry. So these are activities that uh, different maids uh, do. So this is their job. And here below we have service areas, summer side and so on and so forth. So probably it's some customer uh, service poster. Let's have a look at the uh, options. What do you think is the correct one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually housekeeping. You're exactly right. Housekeeping, it's uh, like the synonym of the word cleaning, he kitchen, home, bathroom, everything that is connected to that. Okay, great job. Let's go to the question 18. Uh, here also we need to look at the word gym. I think this is the most important one. And uh, please notice that we don't have the word gym in the options. We will have some kind of synonym. What do you think must be here is the correct option? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you're right. It's doing sports, obviously, because people work out in the gym. So doing sports at the gym, the same. Uh, question 19. Let's have a look at the picture, the posters, the best musical of the century. Uh, the word musical also can be um, connected to theater, to play, and so on. What do you think is the correct answer here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You're right, the theater going, obviously, just because uh, we can see musicals in the theater. 
Ah, okay, great job. Let's move on to question 20. Wanted lady teachers. Uh, here, I would like to focus on the word wanted and um, interview, walk in interview. Walk in interview, it means that you don't need to send your resume or CV beforehand, just you can go to school uh, and uh, to apply from there. So you don't need any pre-screening before your interview, just uh, for you to know, maybe you will have it somewhere. Uh, here in the options, we can the word, uh, we have the word uh, schooling, G, and job hunting, H. What do you think is this one? Mm -hmm. I can see some uh, H, G. Uh, why it cannot be schooling? Just because we are talking about um, finding a job. Wanted lady teachers means we need lady teachers. We need a teacher. So uh, this is connected to job hunting. Uh, job hunting here means uh, like the process when someone is looking for a job. And they also mentioned here uh, BED, it's bachelor degree. Bachelor degree, it's something you're going to get after school, after your graduation. So this year you're going to be starting your uh, bachelor's degree. Uh, then we have some uh, uh, like kind of requirements uh, for them. Uh, they will handle math classes from 6 to 10th standard. Standard, it's a grade, like 11th grade, 5th grade, 4th grade, and so on. Uh, dates when they can apply, time, and so on, and school. But if we mention schooling, then uh, they would probably have some poster about students or some extra curricular, uh, curricular activities and so on, but not about the teachers. So this is a job hunting. And uh, the 21st poster right here about the Harry Potter. Uh, what do you think must be? Uh, here is the correct option. Mm -hmm. A, B, uh -huh. okay, um, let's deal with this one. Um, yes, really reading books, it's something that you might choose from the first uh, glance, but don't be in a hurry. Let's read. Have a magical day out with a tour of the Harry Potter films at Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter. Pay attention, magical day with a tour of films tour London. Something connected to traveling, sightseeing, seeing some famous places, and so on. This one is only a sightseeing. It cannot be read in books because they just mention the place where Harry Potter was uh, filmed, not even written as a book. Uh, traveling, I can see also you mentioned this option. It cannot be just because it's not some, um, you know, massive trip somewhere. Uh, they can uh, give you this uh, tour only if you are based in London or maybe if you're a tourist in London, but they're not suggesting you to take you from Ukraine, for example, to London. So it's not traveling. Here they focus on seeing famous places, but as we know, seeing famous places means go sightseeing. So here the option uh, is sightseeing. As you can see, uh, this is the first uh, task in reading part, and it already can make you confused. So be very, very careful, be very attentive, go deep into details. Don't choose uh, the first, you know, the first answer that is the same to uh, the topic of the poster, because it might have another meaning, like this one is Harry Potter. It can be connected to reading, to traveling, and to sightseeing. But uh, remember about the meaning of the words. Uh, let's go to the questions 22 and 26, this one. So we are going to be having a huge, a huge text, uh, a long text uh, and some uh, questions, five questions of multiple choice. Uh, here the strategy is basically the same as we had in the listening task, so it will be much easier for you to complete, I think. Uh, first, let's deal with the keywords. Uh, why did Julia call the radio program? Remember, when you have a text, uh, never start reading the text the first. First, go to the question. So I am showing you, uh, demonstrating the question right now without the text on purpose, so that you have this habit of reading the question before you go to read the text. Keyword, uh, why Julia called 
program or radio program. So we need to know the reason why it happened. Option A, it was a chance to win a new car. Uh, we can underline chance, win, car, enough. B, decided to participate in the discussion. Decided, participate, discussion, or just participate, discussion without the word decide. C, uh, she had an opportunity to talk to the president. Uh, opportunity, talk, president, also I think fine. It was one of her usual activities, um, one usual activity or just usual activities. Let's have a look at the text. Uh, I have underlined some uh, phrases for you. Let's deal with that together. I have the first I have underlined every morning she would listen to the radio. It's something that might confuse you before you go to answer the question and you might think, okay, it was one of her usual activities because it's stated in the text. But it does not, it is not stated that uh, exactly calling the radio program was her usual activity. Just uh, every morning she would listen to the radio. The listening was a usual activity, but not calling. So option D cannot be right um, at all. Next phrase, I found in immediately to say I was going to be 80 and my car Tracy was a 20 year old Toyota and she ran beautifully. So let's have a look. Uh, we could happily drive to London together and so on and so forth. And the phrase, greedy politician needed all these new cars beyond me. So she didn't understand why politician wanted one more new car. And here the phrase, one day the discussion turned to the former president and so on, and he stays in cars. I was excited. So she, when she heard about his taste in cars, she got excited and decided to call them. So what do you think is the correct option here in the text? If it was very sudden, it was not planned for her and she wanted to express her opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, it's B. Uh, she wanted to participate in discussion and say that even my old car runs beautifully. Why do you need a new one, Mr. President? And uh, you might also confuse it with the option C. She had an opportunity to talk to the president. But actually, her main, um, main idea was not just to talk to the president. Her main idea was to say that my car still can, uh, can work, even if uh, it's very old. So it's the option uh, B. 23. Uh, what, what was Julie going to do according to paragraph two? So here the creators of the note test already help us where to find the answer. That's great. Uh, let's underline the keyword. Uh, what Julia going to do? Okay, option move uh, from country to town. B, travel London air. C, take up gardening as a hobby. By the way, the word uh, phrasal verb take up means to start something, uh, to start something doing as a hobby probably most of the time. D, to drive through Africa to Europe. This one we would underline drive through Africa, Europe. So from Africa to Europe. Let's have a look at the text. Uh, we need here to remember uh, that uh, in the first part of the text, we uh, already knew that she lives in Africa, Elba lives in Africa. And we have the phrase, she promised on air to get to Buckingham Palace to have tea with the queen. Uh, what do you think is correct here in this 23rd question? Talking about this sentence and uh, the question itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I underlined uh, the phrase on air on purpose because it might uh, lead you, mislead you and confuse. And because we had the option B to travel to London by air. So she promised on air to get to Buckingham Palace, uh, even though it's in England, but we don't have anything mentioned about London in the, exactly. So you're right. It's option D to drive Oh, sorry, what's going on? Okay, to so drive through Africa to Europe means uh, she was going to uh, start from Africa and to travel to Europe to Buckingham Palace uh, to have tea uh, with the Queen. So you're right, it's option D. Uh, question 24, which of the following is true of Julia? So uh, what is true about her? Uh, obviously, option A, slept, tent, side, rot. 
enough, swung, uh, swam uh, mountain lakes, uh, challenged uh, car rally, uh, challenged herself, and at last one climbed mountain top. Let's read. Uh, she often spent nights in a canvas shelters next to the car, okay, and next, the mountains I would have climbed, the lakes I would have swum in. Let's have a look. We mentioned all the options, almost all of them, and uh, uh, let's focus on the first phrase. Albo often spent nights in a canvas shelter next to, the, next to her car. It's kind of a synonym of the first option A. She kept in a tent on the side of the road. Okay, let's keep it in mind. Let's have a look at the second, mountain lakes. Um, the lakes I would have swum in. This is a grammar structure that indicates something that didn't happen. Like she regrets that she didn't do that in, uh, when she was young and so on and so forth. So she, uh, this is already not true because it's about past. It's not about this exact situation. C, uh, car rally, we don't have any information about that. And D, climb to the mountain top. Also, the same situation as with mountain lakes, it's something that she regrets about. So you're right, it's option, uh, option A. Uh, remember, some grammar structures can help you and can mislead you at the same time. So here it's something that uh, she regrets about. 25. What happened to her in Egypt? Uh, we can just mention what happened in Egypt. Uh, she met the queen there, uh, met queen, uh, had to repair her car there, uh, repair her car, uh, next, uh, stay eating place, and last one, bought Arabic plates. Let's read. Uh, Tracy was fitted with Arabic number plates. Her only option was to sleep in a cafe. So uh, what do you think is the correct option here in this question? 25. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. B and uh, C, D. Okay, let's have a look. So the correct option here is C, just because we have uh, underlined the option sleep in a cafe, to stay at an eating place. To stay, it means not just to stay for some time and to have lunch, for example. It means to spend night and stay for a long time usually, or leave somewhere even, some like for two days or for a week and so on. So stay, it's a synonym of the word uh, leave in some context here as well. Okay, 26. Uh, what can be uh, inferred from the text about Julia? So what we can know about uh, the text, uh, about from the text about Julia? In this question, we need to sum up all the text, so all the text completely. And uh, let's have a look at the options. Uh, got invitation, annual horse race, enjoyed tea at palace, got engaged royal event, and reached destination summer. Okay, um, let's remember what does it mean to get engaged. To get engaged means uh, to uh, make your relationship official, but before marriage, like kind of proposal. Let's have a look at the text. The first phrase, arrived in London for the summer season. So this is option D, like synonyms. Okay, let's, have, uh, let's keep it in mind. I was dying to have tea with the queen. I was dying to have tea. I was dying. It means I really wanted, I wanted it so much. Just for you to know this phrase, probably you will have it in the test. Uh, if I say I was dying to do that, it doesn't mean that I really did that because it's just I wanted that, but who knows? So uh, this one cannot be right. Uh, she didn't have tea at palace. Option B cannot be right here. Uh, but it was the week of Royal Ascot horse race. Uh, she got an invitation to the annual horse race. Again, yes, maybe she has been to horse race, okay, but who knows, maybe she got the invitation, maybe not, just because uh, maybe she went there without, just on her own without anyone's invitation. And the phrase, apparently, she was otherwise engaged. Again, we don't have any information whether she got engaged or she really got engaged, just apparently, like maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. The great option right here, only one is left. She reached her destination in summer. She managed to arrive to London uh, in summer. It's mentioned here in the text as well, arrived in London. Uh, the word reach is a synonym of the word arrive uh, in this case. 
Okay, let's move on. Uh, the next part, it will be questions uh, 27 to 32. Uh, in this uh, task, reading task, we will have not only one text, but lots of uh, small texts uh, like on different topics. Let's have a look at the first one. So uh, here, as you can see, we have the title and just a short text. We need to read and choose the best option from uh, these ones which shop and propose, they propose us some ideas. Uh, let's have a look at the phrase underlined here. If you can choose from all the fabulous famous fashion fan, uh, brands, ask the advisor for a free uh, consultation to help you achieve the look you want. Uh, here we can already uh, like know that it's something about fashion, something about uh, consultant uh, at the shop or um, just maybe some outfit maker and so on and so forth. Uh, we need to choose the best idea uh, of this piece of text. What do you think is correct here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. You're right, it's D. Uh, offers professional tips on style. Uh, so style, it's basically the synonym of the word, probably fashion and also brands are connected to clothes. Uh, also the word tip, it's kind of advice, uh, synonym of the word advice. Uh, in the text, we have advisor, the person who can help you. And uh, consultation, it's a kind of uh, like discussion where you discuss what is better, what is worse, uh, what fits you, what doesn't fit you, and so on. Uh, as you remember, I showed you the first, uh, the text, and then uh, the options. Of course, the best way for you just to read the options first, but just I started with the text for you to analyze. But when you start this task in your actual Zenova test, please read the options first, like read A, B, C, D, and so on. Underline the keywords as well in each option, and only then go to read the text. Underline the proof in the text. Please make sure that your answer is correct by uh, the proof from the text, not just because you think so. Try to find synonyms like we found here, uh, tips, advice, style, fashion. It will help you a lot in your um, question. The next one. Uh, so uh, option D is already uh, out here. So uh, don't forget to mark it somewhere in your answer sheet so that you don't get confused. Uh, text 28, um, I have underlined the phrase, the store is instantly recognizable with the Union Jack flying over the mock Tudor exterior. What do you think is here? What, do they, what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. See, okay. Any other options? Mm -hmm. Okay, C. Let's have a look at the option C. Can easily be found because of the flag outside. Uh, flag. Let's find the synonym in the text. The store is instantly recognizable with the Union Jack flying. Flying, it's uh, something that can be moved uh, um, according to the wind. So Union Jack, it's probably some kind of a flag, right? Or a sign of something. So uh, you're right, it's option C. So we could find the synonyms and the proof uh, in the text. Let's go to the question 29 and the phrase. You will also find plenty of beauty products. So we are talking about maybe some cosmetic or makeup, a wide range of stunning furniture, curtains, as well as the latest household goods. Here we can understand that we are talking about some probably um, housekeeping or uh, we can buy some furniture or some interior items and so on. Uh-huh, you think it's A. You're exactly right. So different objects for home. Uh, the word various, it's a synonym of the word uh, different. Uh, here they explain that you can find uh, furniture, curtains, and obviously it's about the home, the house. You're right. Okay, 30. 
Uh, the next one, uh, transformed, uh, uh, Samsung transformed into world's first vintage department store. Shop pride itself in the 70s, 80s, and 90s vintage fashion collections. Okay, your ideas? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, it's B. Of course, obviously, just because we're talking about 70s, 80s, 90s, something from the past. And in the option, you have sales items from the past. But you could also, uh, for example, um, confuse it with option D, like because they're talking about style as well. But we have already chosen that. Uh, the next 31, the shop hosts regular beginner to advanced workshops to teach the necessary skills. Um, okay, some training sessions, workshops, skills. What do you think is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's master classes. Here, the word master class it's synonym of a workshop or uh, teach skill and so on. Great. And the question started to uh, former department store has been transformed into something. Take advantage of the many services we offer, competitive shipping all over the globe and so on. And so forth. your ideas. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Seen. Okay. Yeah, you're right, it's G, of course. Delivers your purchase for worldwide. Remember, the word purchase, it's a synonym of the word uh, when you uh, buy something, like it's your purchase in the shop, for instance, when you pay for something and you get it. So here we are talking about this one and uh, they can send you delivery. It's something that you get from the shop or from the post office. And they also mentioned competitive shipping. It's a synonym of the word uh, to deliver or to send as well. Okay, great job. Remember that this kind of the texts um, are not required to be read completely. You just need to focus on the most um, important uh, points sentences in the text. Let's go to the question 33. Uh, this is the next part. Uh, so here you will have to complete the uh, text with the correct idea. Uh, let's analyze. When you start this kind of the task, also please be focused on the gap and the words before the gap and the words after the gap. Also, let's have a look at uh, the text itself. For nearly 10 years, I have spent my month and evenings and so on and so forth. Uh, first, what can it be about? About my routine, I think, and I see the word rehearsal. It's something connected to music or maybe theater playing and so on. Next, we mentioned singing. So obviously it's about music. Someone uh, is into music. Uh, let's go to options. Let's look at the options and underline the keywords here. I don't remember the names. Okay, not remember names. Miss Vic Ties, uh, new information ideas, uh, spend a lot of time with someone whom they saw occasionally, uh, turned out quantity matters, often arrive bad mood, whom have never met before. Okay, what is your option here? What do you think? If we uh, look at the word but after uh, the gap. Mm -hmm. I can see your answer is great. Okay. Great. Let's focus on this exact, uh, exact sentence. Mondays are not my favorite days. Gap. But by the end of the rehearsal, I usually feel energized. You're exactly right. And uh, you need the option G. I often arrive in bad mood, but, the, but the, uh, by the end of the rehearsal, I feel energized, even though I have bad mood uh, on Mondays, for example. You're right. So here is the word but can help us to choose the correct option and the sense of the sentence overall. Uh, 34. Let's have a look. Uh, also, we need to complete the end. Another way of putting this is something. Let's go to the previous uh, sentence. I miss it. In lockdown, I don't feel short of affection or emotional support, but I do feel short of friendly faces and casual conversations. And I, uh, another way of putting this is, what are your options? Mm -hmm. Okay. B. Okay, let's have a look. 
Yeah, you're right. So uh, the speaker, uh, the author of the text, uh, needs to find some solution for your uh, kind of a depression. So another way of putting this is that I miss my weak ties. It means that she uh, wants to kind of communicate more during the lockdown period. And if you look at the structure of the sentence, after is, we usually explain like a noun or uh, we might um, add some adjective and so on. Uh, here, this is, I guess, the only one option that is possible according to the grammar, uh, like according to the structure of the sentence. It also helps if you uh, are focused, uh, if you are confused uh, about the meaning of the, of the text, you might also find it uh, grammatically. Uh, 35. Uh, scholars used to assume that an individual's well-being dependent mainly on the quality of relationship with close friends and family. Something Two, what are your options here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we need to focus on the words friends and family and something else. Let's see. Uh, but it has turned out that quantity matters too. The word too. So uh, first, she mentions relationship, that they matter, but there is something else that matters. So it has turned out, uh, turn out means to become or to understand that something be uh, became another way, that quantity matters, like the number or the amount of something matters. So here the correct option is F. Uh, and two mentions that we have two ideas, uh, two ideas, but different ones. And she didn't expect that it really matters. Uh, again, uh, you're, I can see that you're mentioning the option D, whom you spent a lot of time with. Um, you know, here the structure of the sentence is another. Let's have a look. Scholars used to assume that an individual's well-being dependent mainly, dependent mainly, on the quality of relationship with close friends and family. It's one idea, like quality of relationships with family. And another idea that also quantity matters, like how many uh, friends and family, uh, like relatives we have and how often we communicate with them is the second idea. But uh, again, we are not mentioning any um, you know, additional details because if we choose D, then we don't need the word to, just um, another additional information here. It's also kind of a confusing uh, question here. So please be uh, deep into details and grammatical details because um, as I mentioned before, then two is not needed in this case if we choose option D. Uh, let's have a look. The next one. One uh, way to think about any person's social world is something. Okay, the essential insight was something. Weak ties are more important to us than strong ones. What are your options here for 36? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. See. Okay, let's have a look. The central insight was that for new information and ideas, weak tires are more important. And even structure of the sentence gives, that, uh, gives us the understanding that uh, this option is right. That uh, insight, uh, like the thought or maybe the knowledge, uh, was that new information really important. So here is option C. Let's go to uh, option th uh, to the question 37. Scientists surveyed something uh, and uh, we have the gap before casual contacts. What are uh, your options here? Contacts, we need some question word, I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see option E whom uh, they saw only occasionally. So context means people, uh, like maybe relatives or friends, whom you 
uh, see often, for instance. So here the structure is also the correct one. And the 38, as the researchers pointed out, that people something swim in. What is your idea here after people? What can we use from these options? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh -huh. So uh, you're right. It's whom you have never met before. People whom you have never met before swim in the same pool of information as you do. As you can see, in the end, we have this part, as you do. Uh, it means that even though you don't know these people and you didn't even see them before, it means that they also have the same source of information or the same knowledge. Here, the structure is uh, very logical. Uh, let's go to the next uh, part. Uh, that was the last task for reading. Now we start use of uh, English. So for use of English, you need just to remember the meaning of the words, uh, the meaning of phrasal verbs. Uh, you need to know uh, different uh, parts of the speech and to remember that uh, in this type of the tasks, we never read the text completely. We don't need any details. We don't need any names, uh, any dates, uh, like additional information. We just need to look at the gap before the gap and after the gap. It's very important not to waste time. We will discuss the questions from 39 to 58. Let's start with the first, uh, 39. So the first, uh, feeling fit is necessary condition for enjoying your trip. Who wants a walking something of a site when you've got a headache? Your options, what do you think is here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah, it's tour. Let's analyze why. Uh, walking tour is basically a phrase that we can use um, for anything, like walking tour around the city or walking tour uh, around some part of some famous place and so on. The most important is that we can use the word tour with walking. What about journey? The word journey cannot be used with uh, the word walking. Like uh, it can be, but it means something um, very long usually. And it means that we go from one place to another place. So this is not something we really, really need. Cruise and travel cannot be used with the word walking. So only one option is left. It's a walking tour. Question 40. Here are a few measures you can something to assure that you feel and so on. Uh, what uh, word can we use with the word measure? What do we usually do with measures? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Make measures, take measures, any other? Okay. Uh, actually, we always use the phrase take measures. It's uh, option B. Make measures, uh, unfortunately, it's not right. It, like cannot be used together. Take measures, it means to take some actions uh, to change something, for example. Use measures, um, cannot be used to get measures, uh, nonsense as well. So it's option B. Uh, 41. Uh, we have here two guests, but we will discuss 41 for now. Uh, and this is one of the worst things you can something to your body. What do you think uh, we can use with um, to your body? here. Mm -hmm. Do, put, bring, give. Okay, yeah, you're right. Do to your body. Usually uh, it means uh, to do something bad to your body, like to harm. It's also kind of a state phrase. phrase. Uh, put to your body doesn't make any sense. Bring to your body uh, can be, but not in this context exactly, because we're talking about some, some bad things. And give to your body, uh, it means to feed yourself, uh, like literally, but here it doesn't make any sense because we are talking about uh, skipping, um, for example, breakfast. Uh, question 42, the same. Uh, never skip something, have a light breakfast, lunch and dinner. Here we need to focus on the words breakfast, lunch and dinner. What do we call these parts of the day, I would say? Okay, yeah, you're right. These are meals. 
uh, we can even like call it literally meal because breakfast it's a meal of the day like we can say the most important meal of the day dish it's not the the, the breakfast it's some specific thing like uh, fried uh, eggs or um, lasagna or pizza and so on courses it's also parts of the breakfast like main course and so on foods again it's very uh, very common like food it's connected to everything meal of the day you're right uh, for a three uh, restaurants have become mindful to health something a variety of low fat low sodium cuisine that is very bitter delicious as an alternative what do you think is here mm -hmm. something a variety and basically here we can for um synonyms so this is kind of a difficult question let's analyze each of them so if you talk about the word suggest it's a synonym of the word uh, recommend usually uh, we suggest some uh, activity to change for the better and recommend to give advice so these are two synonyms offer it means to provide someone with something for instance, to provide someone with idea or a decision or something, proposing it's to propose some um, um, something physical or uh, again to propose the idea. So this one is the correct offering. You're exactly right. Offering a variety of low fat. Uh, even at the restaurant, you might see we are offering, for instance, vegan food or vegetarian food. So this one uh, is providing. Uh, with uh, some low fat food B. Uh, question uh, next, 44. It's the next part, but also use of English. Uh, let's read. Uh, every living being, microorganism, insects, animals, and so on, plants is something on each other for survival. What do you think is here? We also have four uh, kind of a synonym, but uh, we have the preposition on. Only one word here can use this preposition on, and it's, you are exactly uh, uh, right, it's dependent. To be, uh, to depend on means to need someone or to need something. So in this question, we need to look at prepositions. Don't forget about them, they can help you a lot. Uh, 45. Uh, next one. The extinction of one species uh, will naturally create an imbalance within the ecosystem, comma, gap all other life forms within it. Uh, also, we need to feel the difference uh, between these words because preventing it's not to let something to happen, interrupting to stop something. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, sorry, I just had some um, connection uh, issues. Okay, can you see my screen? Please let me know that everything is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, just uh, one second, I will change that. Uh, what about now? Mm, okay, thank you. Sorry, I just uh, had some problems. Okay, uh, positive change? No. Gap how small holds. We need to choose the word uh, after no. What can it be? What do you think? Mm -hmm. No matter, no way. Yeah, you're right. It's no matter. It means it's not important which change, small change, big change, or just um, like middle one. 
any change can uh, give effect. Uh, 45, yeah, sure, let's go back to 45. Uh, 45 is disturbing, means to uh, try to change some uh, process or activity here. You can see it on the screen. Uh, let's go to question 47. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have two questions, but we'll, we will focus on 47. Hold the ability to create a lasting effect of change in the long something. So from the options, we need to uh, we need to choose the phrase that means for a long time, like in the future. What do you think of that? Mm -hmm. uh, long future, long run. Okay. Uh, if you chose long future, uh, you're right, but uh, we have another phrase, state phrase, that you might remember. It's a long run. It means for a long time in the future. It's a state phrase, and we use it all the time. Long future, it like doesn't make any sense. We cannot say like that in English. So long run. Remember, it means uh, for a long time in the future. Uh, 48. Uh, started doing their parts of re in reducing their carbon footprints and uh, something the green way of living. Let's uh, analyze the options. Adjust, try to uh, acquire, uh, changing to change, adopt to take something from someone, make to create. What do you think is here? Mm -hmm. Seen, okay. Yeah, you're right, adopting the green way of living. You know, we can uh, use the word adopt with uh, animals, like adopt animal from a shelter to be uh, the animal's uh, owner uh, and adopt some way of life to get this way of life and try to live like that, to follow that. You're right. Okay, great job. Uh, question 49, the next part also, use of English. Uh, but, uh, but the brain actually can focus attention on just one thing at a time. Again, we need to choose the correct preposition here that is used like a state phrase. What do you think of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you're right if you chose C, at a time. At a time means um, kind of at the same time. So um, now I can focus um, at two things at a time. Like right now I'm focused on giving you the presentation and uh, for example, remembering that I have to tell you something about writing. So I'm focusing on uh, two things at a time, 50. Uh, here, when people switch between tasks, their brains can't keep up with, uh, here grammar knowledge must be, in the chat, uh -huh. keep up with everything. Yes, you're right. Nothing cannot be uh, used here because we have negative form can't keep. In English, we cannot have two negative forms in one sentence. Anybody as well, it's not um, possible here to use because of this uh, negative form. And everybody, uh, we are not um, mentioning people, so we can mention just uh, tasks. And task, it's a non-living thing, uh, everything, right? 51. So there will be a delay as their attention. Again, grammar. Who can uh, give the correct answer? Be careful because uh, we need the grammar for the word the verb for the word attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it's option D. Let's analyze why. The word attention, it's a non-living um, kind of abstract noun. And uh, it's always it, attention, it, it's singular noun. So if we have singular noun, we need to uh, change the verb. Move, we add the ending S in he, she, it. It, attention. Why not A? Because again, if we have uh, attention, we would change attention has moved, but we don't have any option like that. Have is used for I, you, we, and they. Move, not correct because we have uh, to change to S. And are moving is used for plural nouns. Here we have singular noun. 52. 
uh, liking uh, or participate in a classroom discussion while liking a someone's photo. Where should be apostrophe? Mm -hmm. Have a look at the uh, article A that indicates a singular form. Friends, look, if we have a possessive case, in this case, we have only one person, one friend, because we have article A, a friend. If you talk about his or her photos, the photos of this friend, we would put a apostrophe after the word friend, apostrophe and add S in the end. If we have a lot of friends and their photos, we would choose C, friends, and apostrophe after uh, the word. Other options cannot be right because we need possessive case and possessive case um, is always with apostrophe. 53, psychologists who? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Psychologist sim means not one psychologist, but lots of them. And we don't need to add uh, S, who work at Rogers University. Here we need only present simple because when we work somewhere, on, when we study somewhere, we do that every day, right? It's our kind of uh, daily routine. And uh, that's why here this verb even requires only present simple. Okay, good. And uh, uh, the last part of use of English, uh, question 54 to 58. Let's deal with them. The Academy Awards, the Oscars, each year. Again, grammar. Which tense would you use here? Mm -hmm. And remember, here we have the word by that indicates passive voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Are awarded. Uh, are awarded by someone. We cannot use the word, uh, the word, yeah, avoided, just because it's not passive voice. Uh, in passive voice, we need uh, to use uh, the verb to be in different forms, am, is, are, or was, were, if you talk about past, uh, and then the verb in the form or the third form. So remember and have a look at carefully at the prepositions uh, after the gap, it's very important. 55, uh, they were first granted in, what? Do we use with years? What form? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's A, obviously, because we just have year in 1929 without ETH. Uh, 56. The statue that everyone hopes we need to think, what do we need to use after hope? It's a verb of uh, some mental activity, so we need to use. Mm -hmm. I can see the correct answer already. After hope, we need to use infinitive to, to take hope to do something, okay? And uh, we don't need to hear passive voice like C because we don't have any indicator of this grammar structure. 57, best known for, what do you think, which form? And uh, look at the word film director. Film director, screenwriter, someone best known for mm -hmm. directing um, this like movie, I think, or musical, whatever. So uh, he is famous for doing something. We need a gerund form here. Okay, great. And the last question here. Uh, the statue's nickname Oscar has conflicting Think of the uh, part of the speech. Person, adverb, in B, originate and origin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, it's origin. Just because all other uh, options are not right here, we are talking about stories. The first stories has conflicting origin stories. And uh, like we cannot use originator, the person, like the creator, right, of these stories. Originally, does it make sense? Not uh, correct grammatically. And originate, uh, it's a verb. So we cannot use it obviously here as well. Okay, great job. 
Great. Okay, and now let's move on to writing. I will just give you a couple of tips um, how to uh, check yourself because after your trials and all, unfortunately, you don't have any opportunity to ask um, a real examiner to check your writing part. But still, if you have a chance to ask your school teacher, probably please do that. I think they will help you in that. If not, then uh, you can check it yourself. First, let's have a look at the task of this uh, test. We have um, basically informal letter. As you remember, in informal letters, we can use contractions. Uh, by contraction, I mean short forms. Uh, for example, uh, full form, I would like to do something. Contraction is I'd like to, like just a short form uh, of um, auxiliary verbs, for example. Uh, we can also use phrasal verbs. You must use phrasal verbs. Don't forget about linkers like uh, firstly, secondly, uh, thirdly, unfortunately, fortunately, moreover, uh, in addition, in conclusion, to sum up, and so on. You can have this list uh, online, basically, so you can check it out. And remember just, uh, for example, three, four uh, linking words. You don't need to remember all of them, just for your test, I mean. Uh, remember three, four of them and use them in your letter because you will get, uh, get much more uh, better grade than um, if you didn't have this linking. So in this structure of this uh, letter, we have three topics. Introduction, uh, you've got a letter from your English pen friend and three topics. Uh, let's remember about the structure of your letter. The first, you need to have some greetings like hi, dear, hello, and so on. Uh, these greetings must be informal. So you can just use, for, exa for example, uh, hi, Jack, like that. Uh, introduction. Uh, I would like to focus on that here because uh, that's very important. Uh, go back to the task. Introduction. How you can uh, write it wisely and logically. To write introduction, just take the task sentence. In our case, task sentence is, you've got a letter from your English pen friend in which he or she writes that something happened. So you can write, uh, hi, Jack. Um, uh, he or she writes, he, she is going on a sightseeing tour. Okay, so uh, you can write, I'm, uh, I'm writing to you to express my opinion on your recent sightseeing bus tour in uh, your country, for example, in England. And uh, I would like to tell you uh, some um, preferences of mine, for example. It's enough for your introduction. Just um, rephrase, paraphrase the task sentence. Task sentence, it's here. Read it very carefully and try to uh, write the same, but in different words. But the sense should be the same, the meaning. Uh, next, body one, body two, and body three. Body one, it's right here. What type of travel you prefer and why? It's your first paragraph. Second paragraph, what season is the best to visit your country and why? Third paragraph, what places of interest you would recommend him or her to visit in your country and why? This would be your thir third one. Remember, each paragraph should be divided on your answer sheet. It shouldn't be like a solid one text without any, you know, distractors. Uh, you need to have the beginning of the paragraph, the end of the paragraph. It should be clearly visible on your answer sheet, please. Remember about that. That's very important uh, because they will just remove points uh, in, from the structure uh, criterion. Each paragraph should be covered at least with two detailed sentences. Detailed, I mean, uh, they should be covered completely. All the questions you have in the tasks must be covered and answered. Do not leave anything behind. Uh, and the last one, conclusion and closing. Conclusion is just a short uh, summarizing of everything you mentioned before, but um, without repeating yourself. Don't repeat that uh, I have been so, I have written that I have been to England, I have seen so many places and so on. Just you can say, you know, I had a great time in England. I have met lots of different people. I could improve my English. So I think my trip was a great success for me. That's enough for your conclusion. And don't forget to start it with a good linker, like in conclusion or to sum up uh, and so on. And closing, uh, it's just the end, like kind wishes, Maria, or uh, best wishes, looking forward to hearing from you, uh, see you later and so on and so forth. Just some phrase for ending. Uh, your checklist before your writing, use phrasal verbs in your letters. It will give you 
points um, as it will show your vocabulary awareness that you have uh, that you know different phrases. Uh, also, I suggest you uh, just learning uh, 10 of them like in different meaning with a different meaning because you will use them for sure, I think, in any letter. Uh, remember 10 of them and choose uh, to write in your Zenoa task uh, writing part. Use an idiom. Uh, idiom here, I mean uh, some phrases like, for example, break a leg means good luck, or I'm all ears means I'm listening to you carefully, something like that. It will also give you uh, a good uh, benefit for your writing part. Third, keep track of word count uh, means uh, remember that you need to write necessary number of words. If you are asked to write 100 words, you need uh, to remember that it's only about paragraphs. Your greeting and introduction will not be counted. So only paragraphs should be at least 100 words. Um, basically, you will not be able to write less because the topics will not be covered uh, then. Four, make a relevant introduction. We mentioned that before. Take task sentence and paraphrase it. Then don't use your real information. Never write your real name, your phone number, your address, uh, anything that is connected to you, please, because it's forbidden in your writing part. Uh, always uh, use international names like Mary, Kate, Jack, Bob, Simon, and so on. And the last one, please, proofread your writing part. Never leave it behind like, okay, I'm done. Um, I don't care about that anymore. Check if you used articles, if you used uh, punctuation, if you have all the necessary uh, parts of your structure of your letter. Check if you have some spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes. Try to look at your writing part with a fresh uh, glance, like with a fresh view, and uh, then you can submit it uh, there. I will send you now in the chat one document that will help you to check yourself um, according to criteria if you don't have a chance to uh, ask your teacher to check it, so you can just check it out and um, check for yourself. Uh, so guys, um, thank you so much for your participation today. It has been a great pleasure for me to work with you. I hope that I helped you to analyze the listening, reading, use of English and writing as well. Uh, I wish you good luck and um, thank you. Study hard and I wish you good luck in your Zenova test. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Goodbye. Thank you too. Uh, guys, one moment. I will send you the link for the next webinar that you have uh, about Zeno. It will be on Sunday. Also, I will send it in the uh, chat box. One moment. Please take it's right here. Uh, okay, you can see it. So it's just uh, the form where you can uh, get registered uh, for the webinar on Sunday. It will be also connected to the norm. Thank you, guys. Uh, see you. Uh, I can see some question. Uh, how is for you? The trials and all was not easy. Um, that was not easy. Definitely, that was not, especially listening. But uh, you just need to remember that um, you need to remember about the strategy for each task. If you keep it, if you follow it, then it will be much easier for you. But according to me, some of the tasks were really confusing on purpose, honestly, because the questions were very puzzled sometimes. Uh, someone cannot see the link. 
One moment, I will send it again, but... What about now? Can you uh, see the link? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, we have webinars every Sunday, so you will um, be able to study together with us. Okay, guys, thank you so much one more time. Good luck. Study hard.